Hello, Huggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another edition of Ask Dave. The question today comes from Stephen, KN0L. Now, this question was in the pile from four years ago that got lost, okay? And now I'm bringing them out. Now, Steve, I imagine you've long solved your problem, but it's an interesting one, and other people may have the same question. He had a Siltronic sloper at 35 feet on a 48-foot tower with a KLM KT-34 beam. Worked great until a neighbor's tree took it out. I could not find another. Yeah, these guys go belly up. It's hard to be a small producer uh, for ham radio because your sales are so far in between, it's hard to pay fixed expenses. Now, I'm going to tell anybody right now who's looking for a beam, because it used to be that the beams came from high gain, Cushcraft, MFJ, stuff like that. Those were the big suppliers, and they are in the process of wrapping up their business and disappearing. So, call DX Engineering. At the, there's two numbers they have, one if you know exactly what you want, and the other if you don't. So call the one that if you don't. What you're going to get on the other line is another ham radio operator who is expert and they're great con they're big contesters, big DXers and all that sort of thing. These are hams with a capital H, okay? And ask them, what's available nowadays? That'll do the same thing and they'll help you out with that. Now he has an Alpha Delta DXB at 46 feet. This is a trapped and loaded dipole. Okay, I've got a picture of it here, all the different parts and pieces. Uh, it's got some wire, then a uh, loading coil right here, and then this right here, it is a parallel wire sloper antenna, multiband resonant, can take up to 1,000 watts, 160, 80, 40, 30, and it's only 61 feet long, 60 feet long. Okay, now I'm going to tell you right now that it will only cover a tiny portion of 160, a small portion of 80, probably all of 40 and 30, okay, because of the loading that is in them. And that is what is going to make this want to be fairly selective uh, frequency-wise, okay? I will tell you from my own experience that Alpha Delta makes that reminds me of a Sherman tank. I mean, those things are sturdy. They make very sturdy antennas. Okay, so it's probably being relatively conservatively rated at 1,000 watts. And you're going to have to use an antenna tuner with this because I don't think they're going to resonate exactly on those frequencies. Follow the exact directions for tune-up on that antenna. You might be able to squeak by with topping it up with the tuner that's in your radio. All the modern radios have tuners. Okay, on the old Siltronics, the beam direction made little difference seldom. That's interesting. So it wasn't a very powerful beam. My assistant and I just put up the hex beam again. It had been really torn up by the weather and the ultraviolet rays. And we just got the thing back up today and did some testing and so on for it. It gives about 6 dB gain. And it, the, the beam width is about 90 degrees. And so instead of transmitting all the way around 360 degrees like a vertical, we're transmitting just to a quarter of that. Well, you get a four times the power, which is 6 dB. It's a full yes unit on the thing. We did a bunch of testing today and it worked. On the Siltronics, uh, for the couple months old Alpha Delta, does the beam direction help, depending on the direction of the DX station? Okay, what you're putting up is not a beam, it's a sloper. How you turn that beam is not going to affect the sloper very much at all. The sloper will tend to direct this way. Let's take a look at it. Here's your ground, here's your tower. Okay, and you've got your sloper like this, with this end high enough that nobody will walk into it and guillotine themselves. And it is fed, I think, in the middle. So you're going to pull that wire down over here. It's somewhat omnidirectional, but by and large, it will be stronger in this direction. Okay, not this direction, but this direction. If you were to mount that as an inverted V, it would be much closer to omnidirectional, but they say it's a sloper, so might as well use it as a sloper. The beam direction, which is sitting up above the sloper, 
the beam being a Yagi or a quad or a hex beam or something like that is directional, does not affect the other antennas below it to any great degree. Your beam probably you're using for 20 up through 10, 2017, 15, 12, and 10. And that's a good hex beam will do that also. Hex beam, like I said, 60B again because it concentrates the power. And we did some tests to actually show that the gain was slightly more than that. But okay, I hope that uh, helps you out. The Alpha Delta DXB is a perfectly good antenna. Because of the way it's loaded, it will not cover all of 160 by any means. And it will only cover maybe 100 kilohertz on 80, and it should cover all of 40 and all of 30. Now, if you're going to use this for FT8, you can just tune the antenna on 160 to be in the FT8 region, the same on 80, and then you can pretty much do what you want on 40 and 30. Okay, so hope that helps. And I imagine that you've got that thing up already and working, but this gives some ideas for other people also. So Stephen, thanks for your question, a very belated answer, and until we next meet, 73.